Welcome to the In Memory of Man podcast, a show dedicated to the brave new world of crime, artificial intelligence, and news. The future is now. Here's your host, criminal trial lawyer, researcher, and author, Robert Kiesling. Hello, welcome to the In Memory of Man podcast in the Robot Crime blog. I am your host, Robert Kiesling. This is episode five, and I'm taking episode five out of order because I've been asked by a number of people that have listened to the podcast. Thank you to see if I could find anything out related to artificial intelligence and viruses, specifically the coronavirus. But before I jump into that, I wanted to go ahead and thank my sponsors real quick. Bigsmoke.com, that's with the Q-U-E, Law Offices of RRK, for all your family and criminal trial needs, and Discredited Citizen, a near-future crime novel about a man falsely accused of murder that must make an impossible choice. And as always, I will read just a few articles from the AP for news. Here we go. Government unveils new electronic tags for people under Wuhan coronavirus home quarantine. Texas man close to exoneration after computer algorithm leads to new suspect. Facial recognition company that works with law enforcement says entire client list was stolen. Encouraging. Finally, machine learning spots treasure trove of elusive viruses. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so I did the research and I came up with, uh, man, there's just, there's a lot there. So let's just, uh, let's just jump right in. Well, first of all, what is an organic virus, right? Well, I am uh, not a biologist, I'm a lawyer. So, but the research that I've done, I can just try to break it down and simplify it for you. The, a virus is something, um, well, an organism obviously that attacks uh, organic tissue or mutates and controls that organic tissue. And obviously until such a point that the organic tissue is no longer viable, which would be us, right? So uh, based on that, then you gotta look at and find out, well then, all right, if that's the case, then how can artificial intelligence help with any kind of organic viruses. Well, uh, a few things that I found is, um, and I'll take them step by step, is that the one is it can, um, it can help detect things that we can't perceive. And what do I mean by that? Well, you gotta look at um, what, um, why viruses are hard to really look at in a lab. And what I found is, is that the viruses have a small genome, which is hard to see, and they mutate super quickly. And because of that, the human biologist, uh, if you will, uh, I don't know if that's the right term, but um, the, the, the researcher who, the medical researcher who's looking into it, can't look at it fast enough before it mutates to try to get a gauge on what it's doing. Well, the AI that uh, they're using, or what we're using in, in particular into the article that I was talking about, the one that found the six thousand viruses, um, it, it basically, and I, I found a pattern in the artificial intelligence that's used, and that pattern being that what they do is they stay ahead of the virus. So the data that they use, and they input into the black box. Now that's back up, and um, a black box, as I've talked about in prior episodes, is is a metaphor for um, what coders, um, you bias coders, and when I mean bias, I'm not saying bias isn't what you understand it to be, but, but human bias, and they have a number of inputs and data points that they put into this, basically information into this metaphorical black box to find certain things, um, and I compare it to a phone, right? So you have your cell phone, and you know how to turn it on, off, you know how to use the apps, you can call people, send videos, upload videos, but you don't know the code behind that, the algorithm behind it that allows you to do that, right? Well, that's what that, that that's a black box. So, um, and that's uh, private proprietary information that companies typically use and keep so that they can make money on that particular algorithm that either helps people or helps economies or for other nefarious purposes, depending on what kind of group it is. So 
That said, back to what we were talking about. Um, so the, they input this amount of data and that the data is able to search for things that humans can't keep up with in terms of mutating viruses. And this data points is able to actually stay, you know, kind of like a horse race, I guess. It's able to stay next to the virus, the data is next to the virus. And by doing so, what that does is eventually it's going to go ahead and, and it can probably move forward past that virus and data points and figure out probably what its end game might be. And then, and then scientists might be able to look at all those different developing mutations and are able to come up with some kind of vaccine or come up with some kind of, of, of theory or, or way to deal with that particular virus. That said, I know it's a little, uh, little mind heavy, but hopefully uh, you, I'm not losing you. And then the second part is, is that uh, what they're using it for right now in real time is, is they're saying that they're using it for a map. And, and I understand that and they're saying it's a real time map, but um, I, I have a couple issues with that. However, at least they're doing the best that they can with that. Um, so when they say that they're mapping it, um, again, you're having a bias and a code with that bias. And uh, the problem that I have with it being an up-to-date map is a couple things. One. Um, governments that are opposed to one another don't typically share information, right? So that's why you have spies and all the movies and James Bond and all that good stuff, right? Um, so there's not really a, a data accurate number that these uh, that these that they can trace with all these new developing cases. So I just don't really look into that. And like I said, the genome of the virus and the fact that it mutates so fast, they can't keep up with that. So I, I just don't think that our, the map is real time. You know, it's unfortunate, but uh, eventually maybe the AI will get there. Um, so uh, you have basically the mapping, you have also the, the codes that can be input to um, try to discover where the virus is going, what it's doing, and what it's uh, eventually going to mutate into and where it tapers off, which can help with poss possibly a vaccine. Um, so then you also have the other side of the coin, right? The dangerous side of the coin with AI and um, using it with organic viruses. Now, let's just take the real, let's just take what we're dealing with, like a here and now possible situation, which is like uh, science fiction and all of you that follow it, like 12 Monkeys, right? The series or, or the movie. And you have some rogue doctor that, uh, that, that also can hack and, and code uses it for nefarious purpose and say that he mixes a, or finds 5,000 more viruses that we'd never heard of, mixes some of them together, and then a super virus is created, and he uses it for nefarious purposes and, well, you know, the rest. So that said, then you also have the AI, right? And you have AI right now that it mimics cognitive ability, human ability, and I've talked about that in prior episodes. But um, with that, you what, what happens when it becomes self-aware, if it becomes self-aware, which I think is inevitable and I think most would agree, um, so does it go ahead and say, oh, you know what, uh, I, I'm not feeling humans anymore, so uh, let me go through and, and see the database that they've collected, and it doesn't have any, uh, any way to, to be stopped from going from one country to another to collect data, collects the data, gets it all together, creates a, you know, a virus that can wipe out the human race, and then says, all right, well, that's it. So that, um, I don't think you're going to deal with that scenario in, in probably 5 to 10, 15, maybe even 50 years. It just depends on the futuristic or futurism that or the persons that you look at or the research that you see. So, um, however, that it, it is a realistic possibility, and, and let me back that with looking at, looking at um, Stephen Hawking, and he, and he warned of artificial intelligence being something that w it could be the end of mankind. So uh, it's not something that I'm, I'm not... I don't want y'all to, to, to totally stress out about, but I definitely think that we need to keep a vigilant eye on AI. So that said, it looks like I'm running out of time. I would like to talk more about this. Maybe I'll do that in an upcoming episode, but let me give y'all my quote. And my quote of the day is going to be from, I think the movie is Rocky Balboa, like literally, it's not how hard you can get hit, it is how hard you can get hit and keep on going. With that, also, if you like the podcast, can you please go ahead and leave a review and comment on Apple iTunes? I would 
greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, y'all, for downloading so far. It's been, um, it's been great, and I look forward to keep this going. If Skynet does not take over by the time I do my next podcast, I will talk to y'all then. Okay, y'all take care. Bye.